Sports Talk Daily with Andrew Hustler Patterson and Michael Remus. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the program. Tuesday afternoon, middle of July. And this is another edition of Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Lots to get to today and a very special guest fresh off signing a two-year deal with the Winnipeg Jets yesterday. Morgan Barron will join us coming up in just a few minutes. Looking forward to catching up with Morgan on the uh, summer. He's, of course, going to be representing the Jets in the Manitoba Open. The season just passed. How his face is doing as well as the uh, two-year deal that he just signed yesterday with the club. So that's going to come up in about 25 minutes or so after I chop it up with Remus. And then we'll have Mike McIntyre jump on, uh, kind of combo it up a little bit of uh, Jets off-season talks of NHL, as well as some of the other big stories around Winnipeg sports. The Bombers collapse on the weekend. Their game Thursday against the Edmonton Elks. Of course, closed practice today for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And, of course, the return of Kenny Lawler as well, who is speaking with the media today following this Blue Bomber closed practice, which probably should be taking place sometime while we're live between 1 and 3 here on the Winnipeg Sports Talk YouTube channel. Probably touch on the incredible success of the Sea Bears as well with Mike McIntyre. And then Jeff Feinberg at the bottom of the hour. It is Open Championship Week, everybody. One more major. The DraftKings contest, by the way, is open. Winnipeg Sports Talk League. If you haven't already played with us on any of our DraftKings contests, Remus does the CFLs on the weekend. We do some golf and, of course, lots of hockey and football when NFL and NHL get going. Um, send us a tweet. We'll make sure you get an invite. And a shout-out to our pal Eric Johnson of TaylorMade because a little extra carrot for you folks that are going to participate with us in our $3 contest. The winner not only will get the money, top five are going to win cash, but we've got a cool tailor-made hat and some tailor-made balls from Easy e that will be given out for the uh, for the British Open Championship. So uh, big, big show today. Might get into a little NFL talk with, with Feinberg as well because Remus is going to be cutting out a little earlier today. But uh, just before we bring in one Michael Remus, Big shout out to the sponsors that make this show happen every day. Of course, Princess Auto, Cool Bet Canada, the Winnipeg Gold Eyes. We're on the road this week, but we do have our Gold Eye event coming up next week. Next Wednesday, you've got the rest of this week to order. Go to winnipegsportstalk.com, get your tickets, and join us for what should be a great night with the WST crew at the ballpark. Assiniboia Downs back at it tonight. Big one yesterday for the Huss. I have some major momentum. On Remus after my terrible start to the year. We'll get to that a little bit later. Breezy Bend, Aikens Lake, Little Brown Jug, Boston Pizza, Royal Sports, Consolidated Supply, F Apparel, Nick and Nikki DQ, Wallace and Wallace and Vita Health, Manitoba Battery Canadian Club, and our friends at Aquatech and Modern Man Barber Shops. Uh, let's welcome in Michael Remus to the program. And uh, Remo, what's going on? That noise you hear in the rearview mirror is my red hot picks after hitting that triactor yesterday. I've never been so excited to do our picks at the end of the program as I am right now with four straight winning days after about a month of not being able to catch a sniff of anything. Yeah, it's a lot easier when you're winning uh, to be excited. And when you know it's not going your way, you're not exactly looking forward to making more picks. I'm kind of treading water here. I hit one. You laughed at me yesterday. What was the horse? I picked it to place, and you're like, ah, I got that horse to win. Well, it won. It came second? Uh, I've got all night. I bet on it to p place second, and it won, and you bet on it to win, so you get the more money there. So I I'm did. hanging on, but like I'm like – I'm like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible, hanging off a cliff, and like one finger is, you know, starting to fall off, and I might, I might fall, and you might catch up to me. So, I'll get my picks, picks in here for today. There's still, there's still a lot of time. There's still definitely a lot of time. Uh, much like there's still a lot of time in this NHL offseason. However, there are things that are happening right now in, uh, in July. Um, and a couple of those things are contracts. And of course, as we talked yesterday, Morgan Barron has his new two-year deal at 1.35 AAV with the Winnipeg Jets. And uh, looking forward to having him on the program a little bit later on to talk about the new contract and, of course, his offseason. Um, but there still are some 
more immediate things, Reeman. Listen, the Gabriel Velarde, I'm sure, contract, I'm sure will be the next one. Um, what is going to be interesting is how that contract looks when it is signed, whether it is a shorter term deal, you know, for a couple years, and then we go through this again in a couple seasons, or whether the Winnipeg Jets try to, you know, make a long term commitment to Gabriel Velarde right out of the gate. I think that the most likely outcome is probably. Uh, the former, um, you know, a shorter term deal. He came off a great season last year, scoring 23 goals. And that was the first time he'd really be able to play the majority of the games. So, I mean, I guess, you know, having some sort of certainty, I mean, looking at, um, I believe it's cap friendly or one of those um, companies that sort of, you know, predicts contracts. I think the contract for Velarde is going to be in and around 4 million bucks. I think the estimate estimate was 4.06. Um, obviously if you're buying up some more years or buying into unrestricted years, that number will go up. Um, the one thing I am quite confident in predicting is that this is not going to get to arbitration. And I'd say at some point, probably in the next seven days or so, we'll get some sort of announcement that, uh, the Winnipeg Jets have extended one of the newest members of the team that of course came over in the big PLD trade. Yeah, that was the big comment yesterday on our Facebook page. I posted "Hey, Morgan Barron signed, but the next comment is, Hey, what? That's great, but what about Velarde, the big piece in the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade, which we had speculated about for years, and, and Velarde had a great season uh, last year. So it was a breakout season for him. Uh, he was healthy. He played 63 games, 23 goals, 18 assists, 41 points. That was career highs across the board. And I'm looking at Evolving Hockey, which is very good contract projections, and you nailed it. Um, and they have him, they're guessing, the odds are, four-year deal for just over $4 million a year. But we've just seen, we haven't seen a lot of long-term deals. I think a lot of players anticipate the cap. I think for him, he can say, okay, do I want, you know, maybe I have had trouble staying healthy, and you want that security of a four-year, uh, what, $16 million deal or just slightly above? Or do you want to take shorter term, like a two-year deal, like Morgan Barron did, and say, hey, we're going to reevaluate where I'm at in two years? Because here in Winnipeg, he's probably going to get uh, more opportunity, uh, more ice time, uh, more opportunity being on the power play. And, um, you know, just with growth, he's 23 years old. You think 20, you know, 23, 24, 25 ages, you'd have a breakout and you know, maybe think he can get more than the $4 million after two years. So... Uh, there's going to be some give and take, and they did set the arbitration date. We have it on our calendar, the WST calendar, July 28. So that is 10 days away. But they just set these, you know, we've had comments. Us, you're like, why are they taking them to arbitration? And it's like, well, hold on. They just have a date. This is just sets a deadline yeah. for it to get done. Formality. Uh, we, yeah, we're not expecting it to go to arbitration, as we've said here. You know what? You trade for a guy, and then all of a sudden you get in a fight with him in court about how much you're going to pay him. I, you'd like to no. think they can work this out. Yeah. So uh, it's not happening. Next, it would be, as I said, a, inconceivable for them to go to arbitration with a player that's never played a game for the franchise and coming yeah. over as such a key part of such a big trade. Yeah, I don't think so. And what he's wearing number, wearing number thirteen. Has, has they're not going to get in a fight with him after giving out the tweeting out the jersey numbers and all that. So that is the big one. Uh, the other RFAs, they don't have arbitration with Stanley and Rasmus Kupari. Those are kind of min deals. The more intriguing one, uh, Gabe Velarde. Yeah, and just, I mean, it won't be four. I can guarantee you that because four would essentially walk them right to unrestricted free agency. The team has like the four years of team control, which of course is a big part of the the deal, knowing that Dubois had one more and then was going to say bye-bye in a free agency. So I think we're basically looking, you know, the options would be either a two-year deal or like a six- or seven-year deal. And I just think it's far more likely to play out the first couple seasons and see how things go. Um, and, you know, I think it's pretty clear that Gabriel Velarde is going to be one of the players that will be getting a big opportunity to play more in the top six. What is going to be interesting, Remus, is if he does play center or if he plays on the wing. Like, he'd been playing mostly in the wing in L.A., um, but again, he really didn't establish himself. He had injury issues. He wasn't, you know, playing a ton in those first couple seasons. 
And then last year, I mean, they had Kopitar, of course. They had Phil Deneau. Um, and then even a guy that didn't play a lot of center but projects to be a center was drafted as a center in Quinton Byfield. So there certainly is more of an opportunity to play center here. The biggest question of that is, is Mark Scheifele going to be back here to begin the season? And will he be part of that top six and in all likelihood the top center? Moving back to his center position after finishing last year on the wing after <laughs> sort of a uh, a very strange last quarter of the year for Mark Scheifele uh, with, the, uh, with the Winnipeg Jets. The other big question, kind of an off-season question to talk about, is where is Cole Perfetti next year? I mean, Cole Perfetti has played, for the most part, on the wing. He was a center in junior. The big questions about Perfetti, I mean, still with his skating, can he keep up? Can he handle that defensive sort of play of the center? It might be beneficial for him in some ways, a little less time in the quarters might keep him healthy and more upright in the lineup. But I really don't know if, if Perfetti is ready. It would be a great thing for the Winnipeg Jets if he could play a top six center position because I think he's smart enough. He's got the tools and certainly the vision to make players better. But there's a lot that goes into that center position and some of the things that, you know, frankly, Mark Scheifele's had an issue at times, whether he's been committed to it or not, I guess is everyone can make their own decisions on that. Um, but for a team like Winnipeg, with the changes that they're probably going to going to be make with a little less of that high powered offense, if a guy like fifty five isn't around anymore, those center positions are going to be important for guys to be two hundred foot players, and that's why I really like the insurance, if you will, of the re signing of Vlad Nemetsnikov, who can play. In the top six, he can play third, he can play fourth line, he can play in the middle, he can play on the wing if they need, and he'll be a real utility knife, I think, for Rick Bonus as uh, the season gets going in October. Yeah, I'm just looking at the lines on daily face-off, and now I don't think that, you know, whoever's putting those together is just a rough Are those thing official? They have. <laughs> no, they're not. This is, yeah, the summer Jets lines projections. Has, uh, here we are, July 18. Kyle Connor, uh, Mark Shafley, do you have Velarde there? Because I don't think you're breaking up. I think right now you would put Nemesnikov in as your second line center with Nikolai Ehlers, such great chemistry. Would you do? Uh, I mean, where does Cole, I agree, where does Cole Perfetti in? Is he on center? Is he on wing? Like, would you have Ehlers and Perfetti together on wing? Is that, would that be two skinny guys uh, on wing, Huss, on one line? Or would you have Perfetti with Kyle Connor? And some may even debate Kyle Connor himself is a skinny guy as well. I think that's an interesting dynamic there. Or or would you put Nino Niederreiter? Uh, they have him on daily face off of the third line, but he showed as well. He could play the top line, you know, give you uh, a bigger guy. You can go in the corners. I think maybe I'd put him uh, on the top line. So they're, I think we've kind of figured out who the top line. And then in the bottom, I, I'll, I follow Lowry. Is that a pair with Appleton? Or where does Morgan Barron saw it in? Rasmus Kupari? We don't really know too much about him, but maybe he would start on the on the fourth line. So um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Cole Perfetti, very intriguing player. I agree. Where, like, was he playing center? Is he playing wing? Does he? Is there a spot for him in the top six? Or well, and and, you, and before and yeah. before we do anything, can he stay healthy? Can he yeah. can he play a full season? I mean, that's the one thing that really hasn't happened yet for Cole. And listen, if he's going to be a guy that you know is uh, you know expected to play big and important minutes for this team throughout this year. Uh, you know what they say, the best ability is availability. And unfortunately at times Cole has not been there yet. We're going to be speaking with Morgan Barron. And in some ways it, it, listen, I mean, people can think of this in one of two ways with the loss of Dubois, who is obviously a big loss. I mean, as far as where he played the role that he was in, how much ice time he took up, there's a big hole in the middle, but you're bringing in an Alex Iafalo. You're bringing in Gabriel Velarde as well as Kapari. And what it does is maybe makes your top six a little less offensively potent. You hope you can make that up from a defensive side of things and, you know, still be good. But I will say this, at least on paper right now, it makes the bottom six, Remus, way, way more effective. And I think a bottom six... I mean, if we're essentially moving Morgan Barron and Mason Appleton to the fourth line, 
with the addition of Alex Iafallo and the return of Nito Niederreiter and the addition of Gabriel Velarde up front, um, I would say that Rick Bonus, I think, probably will be far closer to maybe running four lines, kind of like the way the Vegas Golden Knights did on their way to winning the Stanley Cup, as opposed to historically what has been a very top hit, uh, top heavy distribution of ice time starting with, you know, Mark Shifley in the middle, who has uh, always been in and around the Jets' ice time leader. And then if Shifley's out at some point before the start of the season, then I think you're looking at a, uh, a very, very different look and probably a different way the coach handles his lineup going into next year. Yeah, as of right now, you know, Mark Shifley is a member of the Winnipeg Jets, and I, you know, based on what we're seeing for returns on other trades, I find it hard to believe that they would – uh, deal him, but I think a lot of fans has are looking towards a team like Seattle, very even uh, ice time distribution as among their forwards. And if the Jets go to you know a Seattle model or a Vegas model, where you know your top guys are getting, you're not really having a top forward averaging over 20 minutes a game, and you know it could be anyone on any given night putting the puck in the back of the net. Uh, I think that could be a recipe to make uh, this team successful. And we do know the Jets gone very top heavy in that fourth line at times, uh, what, like five, six minutes a game. And I don't think that's enough to get it done. And you're going to need contributions from everyone. And, you know, I'm not really a huge, you know, fan. It's like Hudson fantasy where someone's like, Hey, I'll give you uh, three crappy players uh, for one good player. And uh, that's the trade offer. And I don't, I feel like that is the trade offer that the Jets got for Dubois, even though, yeah, maybe they did give up uh, the best player in the trade in Dubois. But uh, Gabe Velarde, you know, what he scored at the same rate, um, you know, points per game last year as Dubois. We talked about that. So uh, you have him and I follow who's a, you know, a type of player that they could definitely use. And uh, Kupari is a, a depth forward. We'll see what he turns into. But I do think uh, that trade does make them a bit stronger and not, not as strong down the middle because we're kind of wondering who the second line center is going to be probably Nemestnikov right now. But um, I, I agree that they'll probably go with a more by committee approach. And you hope some guys like 